In this video, I'm going to show you how I fared when taking my van from empty shell to fully converted for my needs for only $500. And that's $500 Canadian, my friends. Now keep in mind, this isn't something that was just thrown together and then is actually not really usable in reality in the end. No, I built this a few years ago and have been using it ever since. So you also get to hear how it's worked out in the past six years. Now keep in mind, this wasn't a challenge to cut corners. This was to merely limit the build to what I need, being guided by my minimum viable build MVB method. I'll link to a video about that at the end of this video, so you can check it out if you find this interesting. Now in addition to having only what I need, I did need the van to be comfortable enough so that trips of unlimited duration were feasible. In other words, I didn't ever want to have to stop a trip because I felt the features or the comfort of my van was not up to par. Now I did have a long list of other requirements, so let's go through them one by one. First, the van was not to be used for extended periods below freezing. So it was pretty much only needed for spring, summer, and fall travel. It needed to have a full twin bed and mattress. It needed wall and floor coverings. A way to store the bike inside with minimal disassembly. It needed to have a minimum of 250 liters or 66 gallons of storage for sports gear, clothes, food, and kitchenware. And also a minimum of 25 liters or seven gallons for water, fresh water. It needed to have nighttime coverings for the windows. Now, although I spend a lot of time off grid and I usually bathe in streams and lakes, I did want to have the ability to take a shower in some capacity when I wasn't near a body of water. I also wanted a workable way to go to the bathroom if needed. It also needed to have a basic kitchen. And by that, I mean a stove and food cooling and also a table and a chair, so that if I wanted to cook and eat outside, that would be possible. So that kind of meant that I would need a portable stove, if at all possible. It also needed some ability to charge my electronics. So that would be a phone, a camera, my netbook, and a watch. I also wanted to have a plan for some sort of ventilation if needed, and lighting. And finally, as a bonus, a USB capable stereo would be great, but that's maybe asking a bit much. <sighs> wow, that is quite the list. Are you curious how it turned out? Let's go take a look. Honey, sweetie, come here, you gotta see this. Some crazy lunatic on the internet is building his van for, for 500 bucks. <laughs> yeah. He's probably using cardboard and duct tape. <laughs> There's no way he's going to be able to put in a red cedar sauna for that price. Maybe a charcuterie table, though. Okay, let's start with the walls. I purchased two 8-inch Luan mahogany plywood sheets and attached them to the walls with self-tapping screws. I cut them nicely to fit the contours of the van walls and added hooks along the top for coats and other clothes. The total for this? $44. For insulation, I didn't use any. I know some people find this shocking, but I'm not using it in winter or sitting in it in extreme heat all day. I have warm bedding and sleeping clothes, and since most heat is lost through the head, I wear a toque on very cold nights. On very cool mornings, I find that when I turn on the stove to heat up a hot drink or cook breakfast, it also heats up the van very quickly. Stoves put out a lot of heat. You might as well make it do double duty. As far as dealing with hot days, I open the rear doors and I have a mosquito net with magnets glued to it that I attach across the back opening. I also have a small battery-operated fan that I hang from the ceiling right next to where I'm sleeping. Total cost for these things, $12. For the flooring, I bought a sheet of 3 8 inch plywood for the subfloor. 
I topped that with a vinyl clicked together laminate. I easily found a box online that was left over from a house renovation for only $20. I only needed one box of laminate because I figured it would be a waste to finish anything other than the front living space. Below the bed and in the rear where I store my bike, I've left the bare metal of the van. Because I can't stand up in the van, I actually don't wear shoes inside and I keep the floor clean and tend to sit and stretch out on the floor with cushions and pillows. Total cost for the floor, $36. My bed is wall to wall. To make it, I use two sheets of 5 8 inch plywood. The first was cut for supports and the second for the platform. I couldn't skimp on the mattress because I need to sleep well, so I got a custom made full twin size foam mattress. It's got a layer of two inch firm 2036 foam topped with another layer of 1.5 inch 0.5 inch waffle 2026 foam. The total cost for all of this $211. For window coverings I actually use bamboo beach mats that have a silver backing. I've cut them to size and I attach them with the flexible clips meant for the back of picture frames. The clips nestle under the screws that attach the window to the frame. For privacy, separating the cockpit from the rear, I found a set of drapes for $10 from the discount bin of my local fabric store. I got a spring-loaded curtain rod to spread these drapes across the back of the seats. Total cost for this, $26. For storage, I have five 50-liter rubber bins beneath the bed. The lip of the front flooring keeps the bins in place, but I also use a ratchet strap across the front of them when moving for extra safety. Total cost for this, $49. Now let's look at the kitchen. For water storage, I have a 25-liter or 7-gallon container to contain all of my fresh water. I positioned it so the spout is over the doorway entry, so any drips just go outside of the van. For food cooling, I got a cheap 5-day cooler on sale. Even though it's inexpensive, it still holds ice very well, and I tend to only have to get ice every 3-5 to five days, and I'm at the grocery store anyways, so it's not an inconvenience. I also bought a 2-burner portable white gas stove online for $50. To help with cooking outside, I got a lawn chair and a plastic table. And as mentioned, I tend to sit on the floor in the van, so when the weather isn't nice, I can also cook with the stove on the floor while a window or the door is cracked. Total for my kitchen, $141. As far as keeping clean, I tend to swim a lot in lakes and rivers. If I'm in a remote location and I don't have any water source nearby, I bought a $5 garden watering can that allows me to shower outside. I simply pour the water over my head. The can has a surprisingly excellent shower head. For my bathroom, if I have to go in the night, I have a pee bottle. Now ladies might find this rather unusable, but you just add a shiwi and then it becomes much easier. For lighting, I bought a $4 LED lantern from my local dollar store. It has a triangle of three panels of LEDs that provide light in every direction. Although I started with it like this, I eventually took it apart and separated the three panels and added long lengths of wires allowing me to mount the panels separately along the roof while mounting the base of the lantern above my bed with the switch. For power charging, I only have a phone, netbook, camera, and watch. And I'm not stationary for more than two nights, so I find that I can keep all charged while driving using a $20 second-hand inverter that I found online. It simply plugs into the accessory slot of the dashboard. For storing my bike, I made a garage in the rear of the van that takes a mere 11 and a half inches of depth. I'm able to load and unload the bike with no disassembly. I merely have to loosen the handlebars and turn them sideways. Also accessible from the rear 
is more storage underneath the bed. So the total for my van was $515. Yeah! I know it's not exactly 500 but it's pretty close. Oh, and the bonus stereo item? Well, I did find an inexpensive USB-capable one with mounting kit for $129. So with the bonus stereo, my total was $641. So I know this is pretty sparse for some people, but you know what? It really works for me. I've been using it for the past six years, all the way from the deserts in the south to the Yukon and Alaska up in the far north. This exact design probably won't work for anyone else. I mean, there's as many van designs as there are people on the face of the earth. But none is wrong or right or better than the other. The best design is simply the one that works for you. However, I hope with this design, I've at least inspired you and maybe even got your creative juices flowing for your own build. Going forward, I plan to make more videos that go into detail on each of the aspects of this build. So for example, the details of the bed frame build. And why didn't I use insulation? And why didn't I use sound deadening? So if you don't think I'm a crazy lunatic and you want me to keep going making these videos, I'd be humbled if you would subscribe to my channel because this is the only way you can lend me some support and let me know that you want more. Also, coming up on the screen soon should be links to my minimum viable build method video that I mentioned earlier, and also a link to another video that will help you if you're feeling intimidated about getting into van life and don't know if you have what it takes. So check those out, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.